seems that a lot of people tend to stay away from even reading the book of Revelation because the people don't understand or think they don't understand all the symbols and, you know, what's literal, what's symbolic, and trying to figure that all out. And so one of those things I think people probably tend to stay away from is Revelation 5, 6. And it says, And between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders I saw a lamb standing as though I had, it had been slain with seven horns and with seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into the hall unto all the earth. Well, obviously, you know, if you start talking about seven spirits versus, you know, you've got the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So now are we saying the Spirit of God is divided into seven, or is there the Holy Spirit and He has seven spirits that uh, He sends out? Like, what does this actually mean? Well, I think it would be safe to say that we could say it's a sevenfold spirit, just like we we would say that God himself is, you know, it's a threefold spirit, Father, Son, and Spirit, yet they're one. We could say something similar here. And so there is another scripture uh, that touches that, and it's Isaiah uh, chapter 11, verses 1 through 3. And it says, There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. And the delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide disputes by what his ears hear. Now that's interesting, because... You know, obviously Jesse was King David's father, and so it's talking about the kingly line. Well, we know that Jesus is the king of kings, and he comes from that line. He is of that 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 stump. So we're talking about this. And not only that, we know that the Spirit of the Lord rested on Jesus. And Jesus is fully man and fully God. So when he came to earth, you know, he he you know, he was subservient. He didn't he did not uh come and walk in his own in his own like his own power and authority, he he could have. I mean, he was there, you know, everything, in, according to John, that everything was created by him and for him, that, you know, he's the Word, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. But what happened is, is basically, probably for our example, we could say is that he walked in the power of the Holy Spirit. And so, you know, that way, in in our case, we don't have an excuse not not to do the same thing. That if he left his power in heaven, you know, it said that he could have called 10,000 angels, you know, to take him down off the cross, but he didn't do it. He didn't walk in his own power. He followed the leading of the Holy Spirit. So what's interesting here is that if you lay that over top of the menorah and you let the Spirit of the Lord be the, the shaft in the middle, so if you look at a picture of a nor and you think of the Spirit of the Lord as the center shaft, it rested upon the Lord. And Jesus clearly said that he was the light of the world. So it's not a far stretch to think the menorah, which was in the temple, the only light in the temple, um, that gave the priest the ability to, to go in and minister before the Lord, is that it sets up um, three sets of two. So when you first start off, um, it says like for the spirit of wisdom and understanding. So if you go, if the spirit of the Lord is the center shaft and then you put the wisdom and understanding one on each side of the center shaft, then what you actually start to have is some real balance. Because uh, if you you have all the understanding in the world, if you know everything but you don't have wisdom, it's not going to do you much good. Or if you're very wise, but you don't you don't have any facts, or you don't you don't have anything to do with that wisdom, you might be able to make, you know, good decisions, but it might be very limited because you don't understand much. So wisdom and understanding are a perfect balance for one another, and then the menorah had that perfect balance. It was a light on both sides, and then of course the next one was counsel and might. So you know, like in the you know, might is obvious. We understand that you know, little King David goes before he's king. He goes up against Goliath and he he slays him. He has he you know the and he understood that the might of God overpowered the might of Goliath, and that's who he came in the name of the Lord. So um, we understand might, 
Um, but if you don't have counsel, how do you know when to use it and when not to use it? So, again, this is extremely balanced. And so, like the book of Proverbs makes it real clear, you know, there's safety in a multitude of counsel. And so, though you might be mighty, if you don't have counsel to know when to use it and when not to use it, you're going to be in a mess. So, again, the Holy Spirit has both and it's balanced and so that when the holy spirit rests on you you have wisdom and understanding you have counsel and might they balance one another out and the last one is knowledge and the fear of the lord now why why is that interesting well what does scripture say knowledge puffs up knowledge puffs up in other words it produces pride well what what is the antidote for pride or you know that knowledge puffs up. It knowledge, knowledge by itself is going to puff people up, and and you know knowledge, knowledge um, if it leads to pride and pride comes before a fall, we know that that it needs something to go with it. Well, that's the fear of the Lord. And what does Proverbs say about the fear of the Lord? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, which is interesting because you know what's the first one? Wisdom. Wisdom and understanding. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. They all tie back into one another. To me, it's just an absolutely beautiful picture of the sevenfold Spirit of God that rests in in the book of Revelation. It's a picture type uh, of of the menorah that it's just not one light. It's not just the Spirit of the Lord, but there's seven attributes that work. And um, I think that's clear. Now, what does that have to do with us in the New Testament? Well... It's interesting because God um, obviously has a kingdom. The, the problem is um, is that this current system that we live in, in here on the earth, according to 2 Corinthians 4, 4, it says, In this case, the God of this world, little g, has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who's the image of God. So this current world we live in has a God, little g, and it's satanic. It's Satan. I mean, that's just the truth. It's the truth according to Scripture. So we live in it. We live in that world, and so that's why we we live in the world, but we're not of the world. We're not of that system. We don't live that. And so that God, Satan, that little g, you know, that, you know, however you want to think about it, a a roaring lion that has no teeth. It doesn't matter how you think about it. It's a kingdom that we don't belong to. If we've accepted Jesus, we belong to this other kingdom. So it's interesting in John eighteen thirty six, you know, when Jesus is talking about his peop- his followers, it says, Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews, but my kingdom is not of this world. So the kingdom of God is not its not of the world. That's, there's two examples right there. And so the, that other kingdom is the kingdom of Satan. It's the kingdom of darkness. And, you know, again, what good is, a, what good is, is, is light if it doesn't... It's for the darkness, you know. If you if you turn the lights on in a in the daytime, you, you you may not even notice they're on. But you'll notice them on in the middle of the night if you try to get up, you know. And they're not on, you'll notice they're not. You can't you can't operate. Well, it's the same way. The king the kingdom of this world is dark. So interesting in Colossians one three it says he that be Jesus has delivered us from the domain or the kingdom of darkness. And transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son. So that's the bottom line. That's that's why we need, absolutely do need, um, the spirit of the Lord to rest upon us. So if it, if it was good enough for Jesus, and Jesus had to operate under the power of the Holy Spirit, then we have to say the same. You know, like in my own case, I come from German descent. And, um, you know, we were said, my grandpa really like drilled it into our heads, uh, like a German work ethic, you know, like, even like the Bible says, you don't work, you don't eat, you know, so what in, in the way that I was raised is uh, just tell me what to do, let me go do it, you know, if I, if, I, if I need your help, you know, I'll come ask for it, other than that, just let me, just give me my assignment. So people that are hardwired like me, um, you know, you just want God to tell you, what do you want me to do, Lord, let me go do it. The problem is that's not the kingdom of Germany. 
It's not the kingdom of God as well. It's not. And so that's that's the way we of the, that's the way this world is. The world wants to be like that. God, just give us our assignment. Tell me what you want me to do, and let me go do it. The problem is he didn't make Lone Rangers. He made the body of Christ to fit together, and he made us where he doesn't want us to take a job assignment and just go do it. He wants us to walk by the power of the Holy Spirit. So it's interesting in 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 the Old Testament where. You know, the food that, you know, Jesus actually said it too. You know, I have food you don't know about. You know, I have food you don't know about. Well, think about that like manna. And why did God tell him, just take enough manna for today? One day. Don't take enough for a week. The only day you got to do that was on the Sabbath. Or the day before the Sabbath, you got to take two days. So you'd have food on on the Sabbath. You didn't have to go work. Right? So that's, that's the idea is God... God wants us to walk in the Spirit, and that's the key for us. Um, it's, it's walking with one another. It's walking in the body of Christ. It's walking in accountability. It's cause, because the, if the Holy Spirit no longer dwells in tents made by hands, that means He dwells inside of us. And so we know, you know, like if we're two or more gathered there, I am in the midst of them. Well, that's Jesus. So if Jesus is in our midst, we know how he operates. He operates by the sevenfold spirit of God. So if he's in us, that's the way it's going to work, which means he isn't going to do it just with me. And he's not going to do it just with one other person. It's it's as we're together, the body of Christ, that's how the kingdom, you know, takes back ground. And according to this, you know, he's delivered us from the domain of darkness. So that's that's what Jesus is going to do in us, is pulling people out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. It's deliverance. It's healing. It's all these type of things. But daily being, I'm, I'm just saying that we have to unhook from the world, and sometimes we don't we don't realize how much our culture, cultural, um, worldly work ethic sometimes can can get in the way and and tends to make us just want to go do the job assignment. And then when we're wore out and tired and we can't figure out why this didn't work and that didn't work, we're like, "Lord, why didn't, you know, where why didn't you help me?" What well, we didn't we didn't wait. You know, it's those that wait upon the Lord, we get our we get his leading and it's completely different. It runs parallel. It seems like it might be the same thing, but it's a little different. We still get the assignment and do what the Lord is telling us, but we're doing it with the sevenfold spirit of God. And again, it's when you go back to that uh, Isaiah verse, it said that he would not judge according to his eyes. And again, when you go back to Revelation, it said it had seven, uh, seven eyes, seven eyes. So we're not looking with two eyes. We're not looking at things through our two eyes. It's the sevenfold. It's the sevenfold view of, of Holy Spirit that gets to see everything that we're not being able to see as mere humans. He gets to see all that. So it reminds me kind of like the movie The Matrix where there's like the computer world and you know, and, and people are in the real world, world, but they're plugged into this computer world. Like people are today. They can't get off their phones. You know, everybody, people won't even, they don't talk to one another again. They're all plugged into their phones. It's, it's like a whole kingdom in itself of... Of you know, people don't know how to talk to one another no more. They don't know it's it's become something of the past almost with this crazy world we live in, this digital world. So it's it's similar to that in that movie <clears throat> where people were so plugged in, in into that world they didn't realize anymore they almost weren't human. So we're the same way. It's not that we're human, but we forgot we're actually spiritual. And if we're spiritual, we have to follow the Spirit of God, the sevenfold spirit. So I hope that makes sense. Thanks. God bless.